Back in July of last year, I did a video that was sort of out of the ordinary for my channel. I decided to analyze a song called 46 and 2 by the band Tool. I didn't expect much to come of it. Normally the videos that do best on my channel tend to be centered around video games. Surprisingly, that video managed to garner over 100,000 views. To this day, I still have a disproportionate number of people telling me that they found my channel with this video. I've also had a large number of people asking me if I would ever analyze another Tool song. I thought that if I were to ever do another Tool analysis video, it would be on the song that everybody tends to cite as their greatest work. Lateralis. In fact, up until a week ago, my next video was going to be on Lateralis, until I started my research. After going through various dissections of Lateralis on YouTube, in forums, and blogs, I decided that there was no point in doing my own video on the song because everything has already been said. If I can't offer an original thought on something, then why bother? After crossing Lateralis off my list, I figured the logical song to revert to was Third Eye, the final song off Tool's 1996 album Anima. Where Lateralis has gotten all of the analytical attention, Third Eye seems to have received almost none. This is very surprising to me because, in my opinion, Third Eye is as profound as Lateralis. My justification for this opinion lies in the lyrics. Hidden within these words are the secrets to not only Maynard James Keenan's spiritual journey, but also the overall journey the band is trying to take us on. Not only will I explain Third Eye, but in doing so, I will causally explain songs that appear on the Lateralis and Fear Inoculum albums. Before I do that, however, I shall first explain the concept of the Third Eye and its religious history. In the Buddhist and Hindu traditions, there is a concept known as the Chakra. The chakra is a focal point within our spiritual bodies. This spiritual body is the aspect of ourselves that is non-physical. It is what the East would refer to as the subtle body. Buddhist texts speak of five chakras within our subtle bodies, while Hindu tradition speaks of either six or seven. Through meditation, breathing exercises, and other methods, one may channel the subtle breath that resides in our subtle bodies through the chakras. In doing this, one can maintain spiritual and physical health, and hopefully obtain states of divinity. One of the chakras that resides in our subtle body lies in the area between our eyebrows. In Hinduism, this chakra is known as Agnya. In Sanskrit, Agnya means perceive or beyond wisdom. Alternatively, especially in modern times, this chakra is known as the third eye chakra. By channeling the subtle breath to the third eye chakra, one can perceive a reality that goes beyond the physical. We will address the nature of that ethereal reality as well as its relation to Tool in a moment. The Agnya, or third eye chakra, is often depicted as a lotus flower with two petals. On the left petal is the Sanskrit letter Hum, which represents the god Shiva. On the right petal is the letter Ksham which represents the goddess Shakti. Inside this particular lotus flower is the Hakini Shakti, which is one of Shakti's many forms. Depicted with six faces and four hands, Hakini Shakti represents the divine feminine in Hinduism, as well as the creative power of the universe. Shakti's human form, Parvati, was married to the aforementioned god Shiva. In some Hindu systems, this marriage of Shiva and Shakti takes on a literal form. The Hindu deity Ardhana Rishvara is an androgynous, hermaphroditic god and is often said to reside within the Agnya Chakra. It is the combination of the masculine and feminine energies inside one vessel. It is by meditating on these masculine and feminine energies which reside in the third eye that one may achieve unity with the highest principle, known as Brahman in Hinduism. It is here that the distinction between you and God dissolves, and you become one with the universe. These concepts bear heavy significance to the song Third Eye, but before I address that song, it will be beneficial to us to see how these concepts pervade Tool's other works. At the end of Tool's music video for Parabola, we see two flaming eyes penetrate a man's body through the feet. These two eyes represent the masculine and feminine energy. 
as demonstrated by the blue and pink color of their irises. These eyes revolve around the chakras latent in the subtle body, and even birth a lotus flower in the chest region. This is appropriate because this is where the Anahata Chakra resides. Just like in the music video, the Anahata Chakra is depicted as a green lotus flower, and also has two intersecting triangles, representing the union of the masculine and feminine energies. The two eyes finally unify in the forehead, where the Agnya Chakra resides. This union reflects the union of Shakti and Shiva with the two petals, as well as the hermaphroditic god Ardhana Rishvara. Upon their union, the man's third eye opens, and the physical reality around him breaks down. Upon achieving unity with Brahman, his ego dissolves, and he becomes one with God. This is the primary example of the third eye concept being referenced in other Tool songs. The references do not stop there, however. We referenced something known as the subtle breath a few moments ago, the energy that one must focus into the chakras during meditation. This breath is known as prana in Hinduism. Prana is the universal sea of energy that infuses and vitalizes all matter. It is the breath that the gods breathed into the formless void at the beginning of time. It is one of many properties that makes human beings in the image of God, as above, so below. The notion of the life-giving breath is near universal in religion and culture. The Greeks had a word for it, pneuma. Pneuma is the second track off of Tool's newest album, Fear Inoculum. The lyrics of that song state that all human beings are born of one breath, one spark. That breath is a divine breath. Upon death, the prana reaches out beyond the flesh, through the third eye, and reunites with the infinite. This reunification is also echoed in the song Reflection. Maynard James Keenan speaks of crucifying the ego so that the light lifts him out. In this song, the light he speaks of emanates from a moon, whom he calls his confidant. This moon might refer to the Hakini Shakti, who is often drawn with the moon, or is described as shining white like the moon. This moon is referred to as she, just as Shakti is referred to as she. The light the moon offers is endless, like a million light reflections passing over. When this happens, Keenan realizes that we are all one mind. This statement, of course, reflects the wise words of Bill Hicks, which we hear at the beginning of the song, Third Eye. Today, a young man on acid realized that all matter is merely energy condensed to a slow vibration, that we are all one consciousness experiencing itself subjectively. There is no such thing as death. Life is only a dream, and we're the imagination of ourselves. Here's Tom with the weather. <laughs> To say that we are all one consciousness experiencing itself is roughly the same thing as saying we are all born of one breath. We are all extensions of the same Godhead, be it the Christian God, the Hindu Brahman, the Buddhist Trikaya, etc. We are not aware of this because the human brain is not built to perceive this level of reality this level of energy emanating from the Godhead. We are only able to perceive the physical realm, the level of energy that is reduced to a slow vibration. But upon opening our third eye, we may perceive the higher energies, the higher planes of existence that abound like a million light reflections passing over. The song Third Eye might describe Maynard James Keenan's experience of that Godhead. In the first verse, Keenan speaks of a face that is bright, blue, and shimmering. This face might reference the fact that the Agnya Chakra is often depicted as blue or indigo, but it might also refer to the godhead we see on the cover of the 10,000 Days album. It is a shade of blue, its head shimmers with the million light reflections, and it has a third eye on its forehead. The creator of this artwork, Alex Gray, describes this piece of art as the net of being, inspired by a blazing vision of an infinite grid of godheads during an ayahuasca journey. He is the creator of the various pieces of art you have seen in this video up until this point. This is what he saw when his third eye was opened. As stated previously, when that barrier between the physical and spiritual realm is lowered, the ego begins to dissolve. The distinction between you and God blurs. The reunification is an emotional one, as evidenced by the following lyrics. So good to see you. I've missed you so much. 
So glad it's over. I've missed you so much. The blurring between the ego and the godhead is present in these lyrics, given the fact that we don't know who the I is. Is it Keenan, Or is it God? Either way, now that the barrier is lowered, both God and Keenan can observe each other face to face. They can watch each other play. Unfortunately, as with any drug like ayahuasca that provokes the opening of the third eye, the effect begins to wear off and the barrier is reinstalled. When this begins to happen, either Keenan or God begins to ask the other, why are you running away? Keenan then begins to whisper several cryptic verses. He references a holy crow above him which he describes as black and blue an obvious reference to the godhead. The mentioning of a crow is appropriate because in folklore, crows are known to carry souls to the land of the dead. In this case, the holy crow is carrying Keenan's soul to the godhead. The phosphorescent desert buttons might be a reference to peyote, the drug that Keenan might have taken to open his third eye. This might be why the eyes of the godhead look familiar to him, but it could also be Keenan remembering what he supposedly knew all along, that he is an extension of the godhead, that he is a part of one consciousness experiencing itself subjectively, and the life he is living is but a dream. Upon realizing this fact, and experiencing the bliss that will come as he reunites with God, Keenan desperately tries to leave his body. He realizes that the idolization of dogma and reason in this reality is unfulfilling. It is false. He now understands the truth. He has seen the face of God. He has experienced the Brahmin state. Any purpose this life holds seems so infinitesimal in comparison. Only the heightened state will suffice, and the only way this state can be maintained is if he violently struggles to pry open his third eye. I did skip over one part of the song, the part where Keenan talks about sticking his hand into the shadow and how he tries to assemble what he might have been. If you want to understand what that part means, please watch the video that I mentioned at the beginning where I analyzed the song 46 and 2. Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked what you just watched, make sure to give this video a like. It really, really, really helps me out. Also, if you want to support the work I do here, please consider going over to my Subscribestar page. There's a link to it in the description box below. I hope you found this enlightening, and if you want to see more enlightening content like this, make sure to subscribe.